Alright, what is up guys and welcome to yet another session with the Swedish team. Today we're looking at the stacking cups problem and per usual we're solving it with Go and we're on the Catis platform. Uh, so first you can navigate to open.catis.com uh, slash problem slash cups. Um, the problem here is basically we have a robot that has some kind of glitch in it. Um, it's supposed to read um, color and radius of a cup or a number of cups um, but sometimes it messes it up and gets the radius incorrect and um, we can identify this glitch by the order of which um, the robot kind of um, reads the color and uh, radius so in this case we read the color first and then the radius. In this case uh, the read will be correct. However if it reads the radius first then the glitch will kind of affect the result and it will double uh, the radius. So in this case uh, both of these are um, a cup that is red and of size 5. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. Um, very simple and if we look at the sample um, input and output we basically only have one file and um, we are supposed to first we read the number of kind of entries um, number of cups in this case um, then we want to uh, determine the radius of each cup and when we have done that we want to order the uh, cups in or in uh, size so we want the radius to increase so in this case blue is the smallest green is a bit bigger and red is the biggest so um, that's very straightforward so let's get into the code so um, I have my Go workspace uh, on my desktop and if you haven't watched that video you can watch it um, down below in the description. I'll leave a link to it uh, and it's how to set up your Go path um, basically in Windows to a um, specific uh, custom workspace directory. Here we create uh, our uh, folder for our problem and we create a samples folder inside where we'll place our samples. Um, and here we just copy them in from our zip file. Um, now we're good to uh, go and create, go into VS Code um, and basically uh, create our Go uh, program. So we can call it stackingcups.go and we start by um, defining package main. Uh, we want this to be an executable, um, this program, and um, we also want to import FNT to be ordered to print and um, read from standard input, and we define our main function uh, like that. So that's our basic setup. Uh, let's go back and look at the problem description. Um, we know that our input will always have the first row containing the number of cups in total that uh, the robot has read. So uh, let's start by reading this number to from standard in into a variable, an integer. Um, so we first de define this um, um, number of cups integer and then we uh, scan, uh, use the FMT scan of method and our format string in this case will be percent %d indicating that it's an integer or number and then we'll point to our number of cups uh, integer um, referring that to this integer that okay whatever we read from standard input will be sent into this number of integer uh, number of cups integer so we can loop over um, we loop over the 
number of cups that we now know is um, stored in our integer. Um, and we loop over it like this using a for loop. And inside we know we want to read both the cup color and the cup radius, uh, which will be the actual uh, radius. So let's move this up a bit. Um, and that will be, uh, be read using our uh, read cup function um, like that. And that I think will be good for the main function. Now we can create our read cup function and it'll return a string, um, meaning our color and a radius, which will be an integer. Um, we know that we will have two parameters, so we could just um, treat these two parameters as two strings for now and uh, scan them using fmt scanf from standard input. Uh, we use the form of string as a string, it'll be two strings, um, and we pass them on into our first param and our second param. Um, at this stage we don't know what they contain since we don't know the order. Uh, so in order to know the order, um, I would uh, suggest using trying to convert uh, the first parameter into an integer. And uh, depending on that result, we'll be able to tell um, what the order is. Uh, so we say that if we know that uh, we do a string conversion from uh, a string to an integer on our first parameter um, we can know that the result of this uh, the converted uh, first parameter we call it uh, it could be an error as well so let's catch that um, and um, otherwise I guess it would be or be to nil um, and if the first parameter is able to be converted into an integer, we know that uh, the radius um, should be the converted first parameter uh, divided by 2, since that will mean our first parameter is the radius, since it's an integer, and we can know that the second parameter will be um, the color. Uh, so that means we should return the color first um, and the radius secondly. And the radius will be divided by 2 since this is the glitch kind of scenario. Um, otherwise, we can say that um, the converted second parameter um, which will then be the radius um, doesn't have to be uh, uh, divided since this is a correct read then we know that okay the first parameter has to be the color and the second converted uh, second um, parameter contains our uh, radius so uh, that's a smooth kind of setup i think oh uh, yeah we have to of course import the string conversion library and we should be able to get we get also some error here. Uh, okay, yeah, we get the we don't uh, we declare it, but we don't use these variables. Um, so let's go ahead and use them. And I think the best way here is to actually store these in a map. So let's create a cup map um, or a dictionary, if you will. And the map will, I mean, it could be either the radius as um, the kind of key, and then it will refer to a color, uh, or the other way around. But I think that will be the most uh, reasonable thing 
or yeah, it doesn't really matter which order. So in this case, the radius will be the key and the string, um, the color will be the value. Um, now we can add for each of these rows we read, for each cup, we can add it to the cup map, this correct information that we have kind of uh, fetched out through our um, function. And we can see that um, the cup color will be the value and the cup radius will be the um, the key here. So now we don't get any errors since we use our values correctly. Uh, and we um, now have kind of the map that we want. Uh, it's not sorted, however. Um, if we were to print this out, uh, we could check at it and see cup map um, unsorted will be the cup map. Um, okay, and we get the unsorted map here. Um, in the order blue, green, red. So we can create our keys um, slice like that, or plain array, um, and then loop over the cup map, uh, adding our keys to uh, this um, slice uh, or array of keys. And now when we have this array of keys, we sort it um, using the sort uh, module here. So we have to import it. Um, so we don't get any errors about that. Um, it's a mutable um, operation. So maybe not that smooth, but okay. And then we can go over uh, the values of uh, this um, this keys array and we then basically print out the values from the cup map using uh, the key here in the sorted keys array. Um, this means we'll get out the, remember the value from the cup map is um, the color and the key is the radius. So this will print out all the colors in the correct order, um, meaning um, an increasing order, right? Um, the increasing radius um, and we'll print out the color of the cups one by one. Um, so we can remove this um, print line and verify that we get the correct result. Um, just running our script here and hopefully undefined key. Okay. Ah, uh, we missed the colon there to kind of um, declare it as well as initialize it. And yes, we get blue, green and red which is the correct order and um, corresponds to the correct sample output. So let's go and submit this solution and see if we uh, cut this things as a good solution as well. So simply drag and drop into this um, submit solution and let's see what she thinks. All right, that concludes our tutorial for today. Successfully solving the stacking cups problem using Golang. Um, so please stay tuned for more content coming out very soon. Uh, drop a like or comment down below uh, on what I could improve on. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more Swedish tea coming at you very soon. So.